Hi, everyone. Our presentation is on the natural order hypothesis. Our group members are myself, Madison, Alyssa, and Kaylee. So starting off with some background information, the natural order hypothesis argues that the acquisition of grammatical structures occurs in a predictable sequence. Um, English language learners generally acquire the grammatical structure of yes, no questions before they acquire the grammatical structure of WH questions, such as who, what, where, when, or why questions. Um, these are all part of um, Krashen's theory of five hypotheses, which was invented in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Moving on to scholars and developers, this theory was developed by Stephen Krashen in 1982. And we have a quote that Krashen states that says, the best methods are there for those that supply comprehensible input in low anxiety situations containing messages that students really wanna hear. These methods do not force early production in the second language, but they allow students to produce when they are ready. Recognizing that improvement comes from supplying communicative and comprehensible input and not from forcing and correcting production. So to sum up what this means, basically we want to enforce students to focus on um, their first language, not as much as the second language and implement the second language that when they're ready and focus on comprehensible input, which is allowing students to learn an environment that they're comfortable in and to listen, even if they don't necessarily understand um, the language. So some main points of the natural order hypotheses is that's very centered based on acquired learning or acquired um, knowledge versus learned knowledge. Um, so language learners will be acquiring grammatical structures in more of a predetermined and quote, natural order, um, which allows some English language learners to acquire the language before others, depending on their situations, which this can also cause individual variations, um, depending on their own primary language when they're learning the second language. Um, and then we just have this chart over here that shows that basically when you're learning something, it's more of a conscious thing that's more explicit and that's in a formal situation. And you're focusing on the grammatical rules and there's some kind of complex order of learning that is taking place. While this natural order of hypothesis falls more of the acquisition phases, which is more in the subconscious mind in informal situations where the English language learners are able to take in things from their environment in order to learn the language and the different sequences. Um, and it more depends on the grammar that they're choosing to use and how that grammar feels and how naturally it comes to them. So for some critique slash criticism on this um, hypothesis, the natural order hypothesis fails to account for the considerable influence of the first language on the acquisition of a second language. Um, second language learners don't necessarily acquire grammatical structure in a predictable sequence. Teaching language through a traditional structural syllabus may not always be helpful to students acquiring the languages they need. And having learners attempt to produce grammatical structures before they are ready may, disru may disrupt the predicted natural order. All right, we have a short video to show you. Just <laughs>
All right. So just like that video had said, um, that kind of just went over a little bit more into depth of what this hypothesis is about. But also when you're applying it to the classroom, um, you wanna just really focus on how your students are learning and to make sure that they are focusing at their own pace when it comes to learning the new language. So just some tips that we have to remember when applying the natural order hypothesis in the classroom would be to differentiate your instruction. So this could be something like providing different posters or signs or labels around the classroom in their own language that could help them, um, as well as more verbal instruction, some other types of visual instruction, or have them work with a partner. Um, limit error correction. So if you notice that students are attempting to use more English in the classroom, um, you wanna support them by not always shutting them down and correcting every single grammar error that they are because your students may be at different levels in de developmental stages. Um, you also wanna provide them with opportunities for students to progress at their own pace. So that kind of goes with the other bullet. Um, along with not giving them a lot of um, error corrections, you want to really focus on the sentence structures that they're able to make at that time in the environment that they're in. Um, you also want to focus on high frequency vocabulary and you want to use more vocab that they'll be able to pick up on and understand when giving directions and instructions and also provide them with the vocabulary that they'll be able to use and repeat back to you if they have any questions. Um, and then you also want to allow natural order acquisition to guide your expectations. So you just need to be aware that the students will be working at their own pace and they'll be acquiring the language at their own pace so that not every student is going to be able to understand and speak language at the same level. And you just need to be patient with them and not have such high expectations for each student and change your expectations based on which student you're working with. So we have two different questions for you all to think about. Um, our comprehension question is, does the natural order hypothesis suggest that language learners acquire the rules of a language in a predictable sequence or learn the rules of a language in a specific sequence? And then for our feedback question, um, what was helpful about this presentation? And what are some changes we can make to help you better understand the natural order hypothesis as a whole? And these are the references that we use for our presentation. Thanks for watching. And I hope that this helped you learn more about the natural order hypothesis.